Hey, I'm Sam Naney with Cascade Endurance, and we're gonna talk briefly about roller skiing. Uh, so roller skiing is a great tool to use if you're training for uh, skimo racing or ski touring, and you just want another uh, modality, another exercise that you can do other than running or uphill hiking. There's a little bit of a learning curve that goes on with these, a bit of nuance that'll be worth practicing, uh, but I'm gonna go quickly through the equipment and then uh, some technique that you can use. So there are many different brands of roller skis now. They've become a lot more popular. Uh, it's easier to, to get them than, than it used to be. I'm on a pair of Swainors, uh, S-W-E-N-O-R. Uh, it's a great, um, a great model. It has some flex to it. It's a composite. And so that's some of the things you can look for when you want to get a pair of roller skis is understanding the type of uh, road surface that you have. Oftentimes uh, in the western U.S. there's a lot of chip seal which is uh, more of a rough road and so having a ski that is either carbon fiber or some other composite material, um, some of them are actually wood core, they have better dampening. Uh, it's going to be a little bit less rugged whereas if you have nice smooth asphalt um, or blacktop you could afford to use an, an aluminum shaft. Uh, so in this instance, and I think for, for most folks who are training for ski touring or ski mountaineering, uh, a classic uh, type roller ski is going to work. And basically what that means is that the roller ski has a ratchet on either the front wheel or the back that makes it, it'll roll forward, but it won't roll backward. And that allows you to basically get that simulated kick the way you might on a, uh, with a skin or with wax if you're thinking Nordic skiing. So again, a classic type roller ski and it's just a typical Nordic boot. Uh, some skimo racers will actually use a tech toe binding, uh, you mount a tech uh, toe piece onto the ski and then you can use your race boot. Uh, that works as well. Um, obviously there's, you're gonna have um, the, it's going to be a comparable range of motion uh, in the walk mode of the boot as you would on snow. Uh, I'm using a Nordic style uh, classic boot here. Uh, it's a little, it's obviously lighter, more flexible. Um, it's not going to get my foot as hot and it's just what I'm familiar with, but uh, you're welcome to do either one. If you use your tech boot, it's going to prevent you from having to buy two pair of boots. So when you first get your skis, oh, and the other thing to think about is with poles, you can use a, um, just a standard Nordic style pole. It can be aluminum, carbon, uh, but the most important thing is that you want to get uh, a roller skiing ferrule. So the, the tips that you get with a Nordic pole typically um, have a softer, um, it's a softer plastic, and then the, the actual metal tip isn't embedded as deep. And if you try to use just a normal snow type ferrule, on pavement, it's the tip's gonna tear out really quickly. So you can buy these roller ski ferrules online. Uh, they're pretty they're pretty easy to come by. Um, these are made by the company V2. Uh, this is my my favorite type of ferrule. Really really durable. Uh, but but that's one thing you're wanting to have because because it's there's nothing worse than making three double pole movements down the road and having your tip fall off. Okay, uh, and lastly. Helmets are encouraged, uh, especially as roads get busier. Uh, there have definitely been instances of uh, roller skiers, just like bikers, getting whacked by the rear view mirror of a car, side mirror. Um, okay, so you've got your skis on. The first thing, if you've never roller skied before, the easiest way to get started is to just get the feel of them by starting to walk because it's gonna be a different feeling. The balance is obviously you know, a priority and you also need to get the feeling for how that ski is going to stop and allow you to drive your leg forward. So getting familiar with that is really useful using flat terrain obviously. Uh, if, if you haven't uh, ever been on roller skis you'll quickly notice there's no uh, actual break to the roller ski. Um, so the idea is that you need to either use flat terrain where you're never building up a lot of speed or when, uh, if you need to slow down, you can perform a little bit of a snowplow motion. You're basically letting the skis roll in a little bit of a V and you're pressing outward with your feet 
to create resistance against the wheels. And again, like everything else, that's something that's worth practicing on flats before you get onto any kind of consequential downhill. Uh, because when you, uh, yeah, ultimately, if you're going down a hill, you can slow down a little bit, but you're basically looking at having to roll it out. So knowing the terrain that you're getting into will save you a lot of road rash. Okay, so now we are set. We got our equipment. We're ready to get rolling. Again, the first thing to think about is just kind of getting used to that striding motion. And then once you've gotten familiar with that, we can move along to uh, more functional uh, technique.